The next topic is sequential adaptive decision making. So, in this course on decision making under uncertainty, we have so far seen situations where we did not adapt a whole lot and in this case, we are going to be talking about where decisions are made one after the other sequentially and you kind of adapt uh, depending on how the randomness gets evolved. Okay. Before we do that, I do want to summarize the course that we have seen so far. Uh, we started by talking about uh, you know, various probability topics and uh, for this topic, here are the items that are going to be important. We have to again go back to the probability of events. We will heavily emphasize conditional probability, especially towards the second half. We will also talk a little bit about discrete random variables. We will not do any continuous random variables in this. So, once again, brushing up on the probability mass function and computation of mean are very important. I do not think I do any variance either. So, basically the probability mass function and mean are two topics that you should brush up. So, I would recommend that if uh, this is a little bit unclear for you. Uh, a quick recap of uh, what we did from the previous topic. Uh, from topic 2, we looked at making one time decisions such as in the secretary problem where we figured out what is the best way to select a secretary. Then we talked about the issue of utility functions where uh, we were looking at three options to gamble A, B and C with various probabilities and various payoffs and figured out what we should do. But again, remember that is a one decision, one time decision, both the secretary problem and the utility function. And then the next one was the nested decision where we used the decision tree for that uh, green cat and in that problem, we had a little bit of adaptive because what happens is uh, one of the strategies when they were adopted, we wanted to see if that was effective or not, if it was not effective, do something. So, there was a little bit of adaptive there and we are going to take that up a notch in today's uh, topic, in topic 4. We also looked at some other single decisions like in the game shows of Jeopardy as well as in Monty Hall. Both those cases were one time decision about in Jeopardy how much to wager in the final Jeopardy and in the Monty Hall problem whether or not you should uh, switch in terms of which door you selected out of the three doors. We went into PERT a little bit, project evaluation. Uh, again, although that was a, a set of activities that were done sequentially, you still had one decision to make which is how long it is going to take for you to complete the project so that you could tell your customer when they could come and uh, pick up what they were looking for. Then we moved on to topic 3 where we made repeated decisions. Okay, We went on doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, we looked at that in the news vendor problem. I do want to say one thing here before moving ahead. Although we said that the demand was IID in the news vendor problem, that is not really necessary. Every day if your demand changes, as long as you know how to characterize it, you could just use that directly and then say, okay, your period is 1 because you have to uh, make sure that, you know, all your demand is satisfied for that and then the next day you get a fresh item, either a new set of flowers or a, a different set of newspapers, right. So, so that can be used even if your uh, uh, demand actually changes with time. We talked a little bit, very qualitative about how do you buffer for uncertainty and variability. Uh, then we went into some uh, mathematical concepts for how to manage inventory using safety stock. Uh, we will again look at inventory today, but that one we were essentially looking at what is called continuous review. So, you were looking at your inventory in a continuous fashion okay, throughout and then you were making decisions. Today, we will look at looking at inventory, however, periodically. Okay, we will see that today. Uh, then we looked at after uh, the inventory part, we looked at route planning uh, or route planning and finally, we uh, looked at this idea of exploration versus exploitation which is a fairly popular topic uh, today. Okay, so now let us move on to topic 4 and topic 4 essentially has two flavors. Uh, the first part we will focus a little bit on strategic decisions and then with a little bit of operational uh, type of decisions. We were earlier only looking at a single decision where uh, uh, you would keep uh, repeating that decision over time in the previous uh, in topic 3 that is. Uh, then that is also a special case of what we call a sequential decision. So, 
uh, in the news vendor problem, for example, every morning looked exactly the same. Now imagine in the inventory case, the next morning could be different from the previous morning. So you were doing something a little bit different. So you did, we did do a little bit of sequential decision making where we adapted to the environment. And uh, the environment itself could evolve randomly and also our decisions could result in some uncertainties, which is going to be the uh, focus of uh, today's or uh, this current topic, topic 4. Now, I do want to say that there are two granularities of decisions. There are still one-time decisions here and this is what we call strategic. So, in some sense, this is from topic 2, the one-time decisions part. So, there is a notion of coming up with a strategic decision uh, and then there is something called a an operational decision that is the second type of decision which is like what we call as feedback control and we look at something we get feedback and then we uh, turn the knob okay uh, so so that that's kind of like the two stage type of decision okay? now these two fall under uh, not really the uh, strategic and operational but these problems fall under a very large uh, set of uh, uh, books and courses available in the literature. One area is called stochastic programming. So, the first uh, three or four lectures um, uh, that we will see today will be on the topic of stochastic programming. And then the last few will be on Markov decision processing. So, these are two topics that were pretty much independently evolved uh, over time. Uh, there is very little crossing between the two areas. However, uh, they address some somewhat similar problems. So we will we will talk about those. The stochastic programming has this notion of strategic decisions and then followed by operational. In the Markov decision process, it tends to be a lot more operational. Okay, so that's kind of how it is. However, both topics uh, in some sense are ones which require tremendous amount of tools in optimization, in mathematical programming, and also in stochastic models we are not assuming that level while teaching this course. So, therefore, we will keep the topic of stochastic programming and Markov decision processes at a very introductory fundamental level. I do want to clarify that. I do not expect you to become uh, you know, experts on these topics at the end of the course. So you can get a flavor for what's going on. These topics are typically dealt with in upper level operations research. Our goal is to provide some type of an introduction to these two topics. This is one of the topics I will squeeze in uh, called Simpson's Parallel. But I just want to give you an introductory uh, lecture. However, if you are interested, I would recommend that you take up an in-depth study. All right. I am going to give you an example for stochastic optimization. Now, this is a bizarre example in some sense, but I wanted to create an example of something uh, which, you know, is complicated enough that you have to think about it carefully and also fix what we are looking at and also is simple enough that you do not have to do very complex things like mathematical physics. So, it is a, it's an interesting example. So, I will consider the following case. Let us say you are visiting a city in the U.S., okay, so we are going to see a lot of dollar signs in this example. And you uh, are in a hotel room and you have two restaurant options, A or B. Both of them order food. And they bring, I mean, you can order food in both places and they will deliver it to you. You might ask, why do you want to place a delivery order? Well, it could be several reasons. Maybe it's so cold, you don't want to go out and buy stuff. Or more commonly, if you just landed in the US, you're guaranteed to have jet lag. And because of which, you, know, you don't want to just sit in your room and how the food get delivered. Okay, so, let us pretend that that is the case. Now, what you do is you look up your favorite restaurant review sites. There are many of them. Uh, I, I sometimes use TripAdvisor if I go to another country. And you go check it out and then they will give you a number. Now, TripAdvisor does not do ratings out of 10. They will do ratings out of 5. So, this is a special uh, uh, site which uh, shall not be named. Uh, no, it's not like Voldemort, don't worry about it. Uh, you're going to be so scared. Uh, turns out that the two restaurants have reviews of 9.2 on the site and 8.9 uh, respectively. So 9.2 for A and 8.9 for B. And you want to first select a restaurant and then close it. 
Now, both restaurants are very similar. Uh, this is purely for academic reasons. Um, that is, you know, I want to give you an example. Now, they have five sets of options. I will again explain this in the uh, in the next slide. Uh, but remember that there are five sets of options. You will see all five options when you go to the website. But when you're ready to make a purchase, you will only see two out of the five sets of options. Okay? Now, each of the two options, or each of the five options, as a matter of fact, has a drink, an appetizer, a main course, and a dessert. Okay? Right? All three. However, you have to commit to the restaurant in order to uh, actually see the two choices. So what you will see first is you will see all five choices and then you have to commit by paying $30. And once you pay that, it will tell you which two out of the five choices are actually available for that day for delivery. Now once those choices are revealed, once those two choices are revealed, the restaurant will allow you to mix and match. You don't have to select one choice or another choice completely. You can pick one from one choice and another. For example, you can pick the drink and dessert from the first choice and the appetizer and main course from the second choice. But you must get one of each. You must get one drink, one appetizer, one main course, and one dessert. All right? So your first decision, which is to be made what is called here and now, this is a word that is often used in successive optimization. You make a here and now decision, which is which restaurant to choose. Now, that is important because if you don't decide that, you wait, you're unnecessarily wasting the $30 that you paid for power plant. Okay? So you decide the restaurant by just looking at what options you have and a few other things. But once you decide which restaurant and you pay the $30 power plant, then your next decision is what appetizer, what drink, what main course, and what dessert to select. Okay? So there's a two stages of decision. Now, first we will talk about the here and now decision. And uh, also, what should you do in the second decision once the options are revealed are the two things that we're going to look at. Let me just summarize what we just saw one more time in this sheet. So essentially what happens is, let's say you go to the two websites and drawing computer screen here. I'm drawing two screens, but this is just to show you this, that there will be two restaurants, restaurant A and restaurant B. Uh, you will of course see them one at a time, you first see the restaurant A. It will list five options, one, two, three, four, and five. And there will be an example, there will be an appetizer, then a drink, okay, and then a uh, main course, and then a dessert. What you will see is you'll see option one, option two, option three, option four, and option five. For example, the name of the appetizer will be written, and you will also see the price code. Okay, so what you will see is you will see the name and you will see the dollar amount, okay, the, dollar, the price. So you will essentially see 5 times 4, 20 numbers here, so $20 amount and the item as well. I'm not going to list the item because it gets really uh, complex already without the 20 things. Uh, but think of the following. Let's say, for example, you could write something like, uh, you know, like a uh, ice cream sundae, for example. For ten dollars, could be it could be ice cream sundae, sundae for dollar ten. So that could be something that's written in the dessert part. Now that is the first option, and then the second, and then the third, fourth, and fifth. Similarly, for restaurant B as well, you have an appetizer, a drink, a main course, and the dessert. And you will have those five choices. Okay. Now again, it will tell you what's the name of the item and what price it is. Okay. So, for example, here uh, you could possibly have something like um, fruit cake for dollar twelve. Okay. Something like that. So you'll have that as a dessert. So that's the first option. Now, when there's a second, third, fourth, and fifth. Then what will happen is here, you, if you decide to go to restaurant A, you pay, you pay dollar thirty. Or here for restaurant B, you pay dollar thirty. Okay, so you pay the thirty dollar cover charge uh, using the card. And once you do the payment, depend on which restaurant you pick, 
let's say you pick restaurant B, once you make the payment, it will go and it will give you only two options. Option one, option one, and option two. Give two options. Okay. Now what happens is you can mix and match. You could take the appetizer here, the drink from here, the main course from here, and this dessert. Okay? You could do that. All right. Now, uh, so that is essentially what's written here, and I have summarized that. Okay? It's not like you have to pick one option or the other, but once you pay the thirty dollars, you'll be revealed with this. Now you have a choice. You could pick either of these appetizers, either of these drinks, either of these main courses, either of these desserts. But your first decision here and now is to figure out whether you pick restaurant A or you pick restaurant B. That's your first choice. Now. Once you do that, now this part uh, is something that I'm sure will come up very soon in life. There's an app that will monitor your preferences, your tastes, your life. Because you don't want to sit down and do all these calculations. You want an app that will go to these websites, get this information, and do some number checking. Okay? So now this app talks to the restaurant website, uses your past behavior, and it will predict what are your preferences. So that's what this app does. We're not going to go into algorithms to do the prediction here, but I'm just telling you that this one has been, this app has been looking at what you do in the past. And uh, some of you, this might scare you. I, I'm not saying that this will happen in the near future. I'm just saying that this is something that we could conceive will happen. Now, it turns out that what this will do is it will look at all the menu items. So it will basically be are here. We are, we are not yet paid the $30. So the app will look at this. Or this, it will look at both those and it will make a decision. It will look at all the items that are there. And now it's going to provide a rating out of five zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, it, it knows, okay, whenever it sees, for example, when it sees this uh, ice cream sundae, it will look at it and say, okay, you really like ice cream sundae. I should give you a high rating for that. Fruitcake, ah, uh, not a big fan. Maybe I'll give you a low number. Okay, so it knows your preference. Now, this there's a difference here. The ratings that we saw here are based out of what other users are telling. These ratings are based on your preference. Okay, so what this app needs to do is use the rating that we saw before, as well as your preferences and the cost. Okay. And the app needs to crunch some numbers, and this will be based out of what we call stochastic programming, and tell you do this. Now there is one more cap. You have a budget of sixty dollars, and that covers the cover charge. What I mean by that is, so you can spend up to sixty dollars, but the thirty dollars that you already paid can be used towards that. Okay, so for example, if you're traveling on business, and your company says, well, we can only uh, reimburse you for sixty dollars, and you say, "Okay, I'm not going to eat for more than sixty dollars." That's the situation. That's why I have a budget of sixty dollars, and the cover charge is also included in that. So that's why it's for them like an incentive to pick the restaurant. They don't want you to pick restaurant A or restaurant B, and then go in there, you find your two choices. Ah, I don't like this. I'm going to the other restaurant. Most people won't do that because they've already paid the thirty dollars cover charge. Now. Turns out that this, although is a one-time decision, okay, right? However, think of using this app over and over again. Wherever you go, you use this app. So in some sense, you're repeating. Okay? So it's good to think of maximizing some type of expected um, reward, okay, or uh, minimizing expected cost. Now, I do want to say a quick note before I stop to say that this example is purely fictitious. Very seriously, this is not a joke. I am doing this only for illustrative purposes. If by any chance there is really such an app or there is really such a restaurant, it is purely coincidental. I have no idea of a real life situation like this.